What's up, YouTube? Derbador Weldor here, coming at you with another video. Today, actually yesterday, I got, boom, suitcase wire feeder. That's right, I thought a lot about a suitcase feeder and the big, big deal with it was, could I run it on a constant current machine and get usable results well i went over to noah's as you saw in my last video and we used the champion elite with the old um s32p the old suitcase feeder from from many many ages ago and it did really well so i was like shoot well if a freaking 30 year old suitcase feeder or maybe more than that suitcase feeder will do so well on constant current with flux core wire i bet a new suitcase feeder will do just as good if not better and let me tell you I have not been disappointed with this thing since I bought it so I got right here let me pull it up here closer Miller suitcase 8 arc reach now some of y'all are gonna be like why'd you get an arc reach model if you don't own a machine that's arc reach Miller Send me a Trailblazer of Arc Reach. I'll review this on the Arc on the Trailblazer Arc Reach. But why why did I get this? Well, besides the fact it was the newest model, it was also the cheapest. I was outdoor $2,300 with this. And if I ever do get an Arc Reach compatible machine, I already got an Arc Reach suitcase feeder. Just because it's Arc Reach does not mean it will not work on other machines right i can hook this up to a non arc reach machine and it'll be just like a voltage sensing wire feeder all right it doesn't have to have arc reach to work but arc reach is preferable because then you get full machine control right here at the front and this is what we're gonna go over. look at our controls these little dials they're inside of this little casing right here so it'd be very difficult to bump these off you know be very difficult to get to these right here and the actual screen is behind this piece of plexiglass right here so there's no exposed screen or anything like that to get damaged it's actually behind that and so you see our two dials it was arc reach if i was hooked up to an arc reach model machine i could adjust my voltage right here it has voltage compensation too, but that's something we can go over on another day. You adjust your voltage here if it's an arc reach machine, or wire feed here, which obviously we use for anything. So, move some stuff out of the way. Let's open it up. Let's get inside of this thing. And of course, you know, the little um, work clamp ground cable-y thing falls out. But we open this up, we get inside here. Have my little bag of 045 tips and another um, nozzle for the Bernard gun sitting in here. But I got some Lincoln Outer Shield 71M in here. Uh, That's just the easiest to get a hold of dual shield. I really don't have any real preferences when it comes to um, my dual shield wire. I've ran ESOB, Hobart, and Lincoln, and you know, in my honest opinion, they all run the same. So, we're looking at our inside here. We got a nice, very thick, well-made cast aluminum drive roll system. It is big, it is beefy. It is like what you see in the 305P. It's very similar to that. If you've ever ran a 305P, you know what I'm talking about. Had these big drive rollers right here. And pull, pull it out. They're big, they're monstrous drive rollers. The ones that come with it, it comes with flux, knurled ones for flux core. It has 1 16th on one side and 045 on the other. You know, we put this together, make sure you have the kind of wire you want to run facing the outside when you put it in here. It fits in like so. Then we twist that little lock, boom. Locked in place, we're back in action. Our Miller style tensioner. This is my favorite. Miller has their drive roll system down very well. I love Miller's drive roll system. 
it's just it is great the numbers right here so you can kind of somewhat have a reference point of less tension more tension yada yada etc etc you know, it holds 10 pound spools this is a small one it's a suitcase eight the biggest it holds is the eight inch spools or the 10 pound spools I like a smaller suitcase machine I reason I got this is because it's smaller than my Millermatic 211 with a higher duty cycle than my Millermatic 211 could ever have so the benefits of the 8 versus the 12, the 8 outweighed as far as benefits was the better machine for me and what I do. So mine, mine lives in constant current because hooked up to the Champion Elite. This is our 2T and 4T. We definitely want to have, um, you definitely want to have it in our 2T mode. Like so. Hold. You have to hold the trigger. We don't want click and release and then it keeps going they want 4t off i know that's really confusing jog this right here they, this is one of the best settings in the entire machine so when you're feeding new wire in and you hold this jog button down it'll run the wire out at full speed to the end of the gun without without actuating the gas solenoid then if you're changing gas or you just hook gas up you can push this purge button right here and as long as you hold it, it'll open the gas solenoid. And this allows you to purge all the air out of the system without pushing out wire. Which is a great feature. It's not a necessary feature, but it's a great feature to have. I'm going to take our work cable here. And I'm going to coil up this line over by our roll here. I'm going to take our ground and stick it on top of our work cable because I've been yelled at and told it's not a ground. I stick that up here in the void that is right above the drive roller. If I tilt this up, you can see how I have it packed in there. Then there's this little lip right here. You can see this little spot right here that our work cable goes in so our work cable goes in here so you can close the suitcase up just like that I love this thing and it it's not terribly heavy but it's still loaded it's got a little bit of weight to it I couldn't imagine what a um, what a 12 series with a 33 pound spool would be like so I'm glad I got the eight for sure. And I got mine, my suitcase, with a good old classic Bernard 300 amp gun. And with the crossfire, um, not the crossfire, center fire, my bad. So I love this gun. This is my favorite MIG gun. We used to have these in school on the Miller 305Ps. They're just amazing. They're invincible their consumables are very well thought out my favorite thing about the consumables is the fact that your tip you look at this right here your tip rests in here and your nozzle I put our nozzle on the nozzle holds it in place and we look on the nozzle another thing I love really well thought out there are these nice little teeth on the nozzle so you can get some grip on the nozzle like when you're wearing gloves or got grease on your hands you know any kind of situation field situation and get some grip on it to pull it out and you're good to go right there I uh, look it's just it's just that simple guys it's just that simple it's a very hefty gun I mean when you hold this gun it's got a little bit of weight to it it's not like a little small 110 gun that doesn't weigh anything but you can feel it's hefty but it it's not terribly heavy for a 300 amp gun either. We look right here, going over to the end. Really big end on this thing. We can see there's this extra line right here. This actually locks in the suitcase. When you tighten it down, there's a little key that latches in on this right here and keeps you from being able to rip this out of the suitcase. 
So it is actually locked into your suitcase. So if it gets snagged, it doesn't rip your MIG gun out and destroy your MIG gun. It'll move the suitcase too. And if you notice on the side of the suitcase, I didn't really show. On the side of the suitcase, it has that molding into the side that kind of stick out. Those are drag rails. So if your suitcase does get drugged, it wears down those drag rails instead of wearing down the actual suitcase itself. Right here, this gives us this little wearable thing that wears out. There's a lot of stuff about these Bernard guns that the sections that wear out are replaceable, like the jump liner. The liner from here to here is replaceable. It's a really smart ahead of, you know, thinking ahead feature. So this section wears out more. You can just replace this section and not have to replace the entire thing. You just replace the section it wears out. So this is the first Bernard gun I've owned. So I'm sure there's a lot more to this Bernard gun than what I've just, just said right now. But it's a fantastic gun. 300 amps, 100% duty cycle, 300 amps. You can't ask for more than that. I mean, you sit there all day, 300 amps, you know, just trigger down all day. And for what I do, this gun doesn't really even get that hot because I am doing 180 something amps pushing the 045 dual shield. And this gun doesn't really get that hot. So, and it does, it dissipates heat very well. That's one of the nice things about it is it dissipates heat well. It doesn't have a um, cover on the neck, so the neck can directly dissipate heat out into the air. That's one great feature. Now, y'all are wondering how it welds. On constant current mode with dual shield, I'd say that's pretty good. This is vertical up. This is out of position, okay? This is a vertical up. He's an angle iron, 316. I did some flat earlier. As some of you may have seen on my Instagram, I did some flat. But then I turned around and did vertical up. I even did this lap joint vertical up. And it was going to be a three bead fillet. Then I was like, oh, I'll do six. And then I went over right here. As you can see, this part is actually, this is overfill because there wasn't enough room to do a six bead fillet. But I just wanted to keep welding. So I just kept welding. This little knob right here is from where the wind decided to act up and take off with my shielding gas. So that's a concern. That's why I have a roll of 045 T11 that will live on the truck. As I was talking about earlier, these are the drag rails right here. These are our drag rails. So if it gets knocked on its side and drug, these will wear down before it gets to the actual suitcase. And it has some smaller ones right here. So, was this worth the money? Right now, first impressions, running it a little bit, I believe it was. The one big benefit, one of the big benefits, I should say, there's a lot of benefits this does have over my 211. One of the benefits is this actually, unless you're feeding wire through the gun, it does not trigger the idle up on the Champion Elite. So this thing right here, you can access all your controls at idle on the Champion Elite. Turn this on at idle on the Champion Elite. And it will not idle up. But when you pull the trigger and it runs the drive rollers getting ready to weld, then it idles up. The Miller Matic 211, when you plug it into the Champion Elite, as long as that booger's on, it's that your, your Champion Elite's going to be at full throttle. As long as that thing is plugged in, it's going to be uh, plugged in and on. It's going to be it's going to be idling up. This right here, I pull the trigger, whoom, idles up. Great benefit other benefit over the 211 it has is the fact that the duty cycle is much better much much better on it it's lighter it's smaller it's more compact i can fit it in a box easier it has better consumables better gun it's more durable i mean i 
there i will take this thing anywhere i love my millermatic 211 too much to abuse like i would this but you also pay a lot more for this the downside to it is you have to have another machine to run it that kind of sucks because you can't just haul it into a factory and plug it into their 220 or 110 you got to run two big old fat leads from your engine drive and also you cannot hook up a spool gun to this that's a bummer right there you can't hook up a spool gun but but i am probably going to try sometime in the future to get some 047 tips and some 047 5356 aluminum and a proper liner and hook this thing up and i'm gonna try and see if i can get this to weld aluminum to mig weld aluminum through this they have the rollers for it they have the u groove rollers that will fit in here so i'm probably gonna give that a shot i don't see it welding thin aluminum very well but i think this could do some this could do some 316 some eighth eighth inch and up pretty well if i'm running thick enough wire but plans for the future so this is my unboxing video coming up hopefully this week hopefully it doesn't have to wait till next week i'm gonna do a field video i'm taking this like i said i'm taking this out to do some structural work and We'll give this uh, a whirl out there in the field hooked up to the champion elite in a parking lot in real world conditions and on constant current with dual shielded wire and you know we're gonna we're gonna show the true capabilities of the champion elite it can do it can do a lot more than um it can do a lot more than just stick weld and we proved that in the last video and we're gonna take it out into the real world and prove it again so thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, please be sure to like and subscribe, and y'all have a fantastic day.